Good afternoon, this is Dr. Bones Live for part three of A Year in Rewind. And today, my special guest has been on the show a few times is Grim. Welcome back to the show, Grim. Hey, thanks for having me, man. And of course, as always, is Nessie. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, the one annoying time, she, she's a woman of few words. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing you, Nessie. I'm, not, I'm just joking around. <laughs> so uh, today's portion of the show is going to be dedicated completely to all the different types of electronic music we've had on the show. And the first one we're going to get to, uh, Grim and I are huge fans of, and I, Nessie, I know she likes a few of the songs. So we're going to listen to Kodachrome with All the Alma. All right, that was Kodachrome with all the uh, AMA. 
And that is uh, my favorite song on their EP, Perla, which came out not too long ago in the summertime. And uh, it is uh, essentially the darkest song on that EP, but it's still a very good song in general because the texture to it, just unbelievable, the change, that sort of thing. So it's uh, it's uh, definitely a EP with, with picking up. So what are your thoughts? Um, it's definitely a nice melodic um, progression in the song. And as you said, when we um, talked about it, um, that it's a rather dark song. I really enjoyed these moments of, well, dark vocals, but still melodic um, sound. So definitely is something interesting to listen to, and it's definitely exciting to listen to. Graham, what do you say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, I love, uh, I love the EP. I, I just got caught out there, so I didn't hear what you just said. <laughs> um, the weather up here is really bad, but uh, but yeah, I, I love the whole EP. I mean, I, I heard Modern Man on your show, uh, and I thought that was just class, just the, the the marriage of like sort of acoustics and the vocals and stuff, and then the way they introduce all the electronics as it goes through that song. And I, I just had to go and listen to the EP, and the EP is just amazing. I, I, I genuinely listened to it a lot. Yeah. Um, I love that track because of the the layers. They use the layers, and it's much darker than their other stuff. And it's like, it's 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 almost slightly rock. I can almost imagine it on a you know distorted guitars and shit, like you know. Yep. But um, but the the vocal layers and stuff, uh, you know, the vocals almost become like an instrument in themselves. That the textures that they use in that particular song are amazing. You know, and when you mentioned uh, how much you like Modern Man, um, if you remember from the interview, Alyssa pretty much said that was a uh, Kind of her her apology to Ryan for for being uh, so kind of cut off, and you know she kind of you, you kind of finally made her open up a little bit more, and uh, you know talk shit out a little bit more. So it's just just an interesting fact, something that I remember from the interview. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> next, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me about that. Sorry about that. So next up, we're gonna uh, get to uh, we're gonna jump back over here to the UK, and we're gonna listen to a band called Hate Notes, and I know, uh, Nessie, uh, if we've had them on your picks, and Grim, I'm not sure if you've heard them yet, but uh, I go, pardon? Yeah, no, they're sort of where I follow them on SoundCloud, like, so there are a couple of tracks I have on my favorites list. Right on, well, we're going to get to How Does It Feel. We'll be back in a few minutes here. Here we go with Hate Notes.
Hate notes. How does it feel? Uh, I really like these guys, and I, that one in particular had kind of that almost '80s pop feel to it, which kind of gave it that uh, nostalgia throwback uh, within the composition of the song. Thoughts, guys? Oh, nice sum up. Uh, and I really like that uh, the melody is so electrifying, and you really uh, can't figure that people uh, will tap their feet on not their head to it because it's such a good tune and it's pop dance music but still has depth in sound what do you say yeah, yeah it's um it's kind of nostalgic you know kind of it's like, um, like oh, that crossover and like the late 80s early 90s of you know dance music and sort of indie bands and stuff you know like um there's almost a bit of new order in there somewhere right uh, and they're you know which, which is really cool like well, <clears throat> it's uh the the rest of the songs are are they're different, but they've got that same kind of edgy feel to it, which makes them uh, that much more exciting because now we're constantly evolving in the in the field of electronic music. And the next one we're gonna get to actually uh, became friends because they met on Twitter and heard each other's songs on the show. Is a band called uh, uh, Pharrell Five, and the song is called Strong Out.
All right, that was uh, Feral 5 with Strong Out. Now, um, the other song I have there is it's called Skin and uh, somewhat similar in sound and uh, just a very kind of cool, like, uh, melodic kind of deep tonage and, like, <clears throat> got a really steady, cool flow to it as well. Yeah, I just want to add something because um, actually Skin is on uh, on the album um, Ralph's live charity music CD offers and it's, well... It's a shared project for mental health issues. Um, there's still some time left, actually five days, to um, match for it. And if you reach the five thousand pound charge, that would be really cool. He has right now um almost hit the half of the uh, money he would like to raise. And if you check him out on Twitter and look for the project on Crowd Crowdfunder, um, type in Ralph's Live Charity Music CD. Would be nice to check it out. There are some great bands involved, types and seek near Thorough Five as mentioned and some other great ones still here on the ninth watch. Um you should definitely check it out and please pledge. Just wanted to add that. Okay. <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah, I agree with that, yeah. <laughs> All right. But, uh, yeah, so that that song as well. That was a that's a great song. I remember you talking about those guys, alright. Um you know, when you played the song, I remember the interview came back to me about the meeting on Twitter and stuff, which yep. was pretty cool. Um, you know, I think uh, I think we did talk about how Twitter is an amazing tool for connecting with people. Like, you know, you, you meet people you, you never thought you would, which is just amazing, like, you know. Oh, that's right. And uh, since I did mention that, uh, I'm kind of following that with uh, <clears throat> another band, that I know you know Grim and you guys met because of the scene and we're gonna listen to Analog Wave with Mezcal.
All right, man. Okay, that was Analog Wave with uh, Mezcal. And uh, before we get to talking about the song, uh, we uh, had to do the interview uh, twice. The first time the microphone didn't work, so he was kind enough to come back on and do it a second time. So I asked one of the normal questions, which is in the second part of the interview, about uh, the name and just the title of the album. Uh, and it's just a play on words. Uh, well, it's a uh, play on letters, mixing uh, the letters around to make it uh, look like analog wave. And I told him initially when I looked at that, I said, I was blanking. And when he pointed that out, I was like, oh, I can't believe I didn't get that. So <laughs> kind of kind of felt like a bit of an idiot, you know, but it was a, a, a very, very clever. And I should have picked that up quicker. But that aside, uh, it was it's a very cool, very, very in-depth song. Um, there's not enough good things to say about that song. I mean, it's just overall the complexity of it and lyrically everything it just it really it's just one of those that he's one of us to over and over again it, it's definitely a complex song and uh each time i listen to it i think uh, i find something new to share about it because it's it's progressing very progressive in sound and has um very um deep layers of sound too and instruments too um the vocals are um pretty atmospheric and very um well done too yeah. Yeah, but it's. Um, I think the. I think one of the amazing things I thought about it was, and I hadn't. I didn't think about it until I actually listened to the song, which was. Uh, um, you actually don't hear. I, I. I haven't heard that many songs about the recession, you know, about the global economic uh, situation. Like I suppose, it's. Uh, it's fitting that two guys from Dublin sort of wrote a song about it because nowhere seems to be worse hit than Europe at the moment. Well, except maybe Greece, than. Um, than Ireland, like you know, so those guys are seeing the brunt of it, and it's just, it's really cool. I mean, and his lyrically, the way he describes it is is uh, is fantastic. Um, but even just that riff, that synth string riff in the chorus is just, it's just fantastic. Like you could almost just, if they just had a song with just that, I'd want to sing along with it, you know. Well, right on. And uh, you were saying uh, during the break too that uh, <clears throat> uh, that you guys are going to try to do some remixes. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm not sure I'm supposed to say anything about that, actually, to be honest. But we didn't talk about not saying anything about it either. So, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, um, uh, through mutual respect and your show, we got in touch with each other, and, yeah, we're going to exchange remixes, so I'm going to I'm gonna brutalize their songs, and they're going to make my songs more graceful. <laughs> <laughs> You're always acting so humble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well... I say brutalized because I'm a brute, so... <laughs> well, I'm, nothing, nothing wrong with that, I guess. <laughs> but uh, the next, actually, ironically, the next person we're going to get to, because you guys have met through the social media, is we're going to play Quick Nobody Smile off your debut EP, Digital Throw Up. So let's dig your song. <laughs>
Quick No Bite Smile and probably one of my favorite songs and as everybody knows uh, I think the world of uh, your debut EP digital, th digital throw up and uh, I can't say enough good things about it. Okay, it's the same for me. I really like the debut EP and well my favorite song is still Dig In but this one is really good too. Um, I like the breathy, breath, rather breathy sound of, uh, of the song and that it's still melodic and minimalist and lyrics, but um, very intense and exciting to listen to. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks. Um, I don't want to say too much about my own music, you know, it's uh, yeah. because you know that way madness dies, you know, like it's sort of I'm gonna turn into Paul Simon or something, yeah. Um, um but uh, but yeah, cheers for the kind words and stuff, yeah. I mean, I, it's weird to hear that, I, I haven't listened to it in basically since it was done and I put it out and uh. All the stuff I'm doing at the moment is nothing like that. I'm doing completely different stuff, you know. But uh, but yeah, that's uh, that was um, that was very angry. I was very angry back then. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's that's it. Made for good music, man. So there's nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> <laughs> the next band we're gonna get up to here is a band I interviewed a few months ago. A band called The Migrant Worker who do other songs essentially uh, via email and Dropbox, so it's uh, pretty decent. So let's get to The Dead Bus by Migrant Worker. All right.
All right, that was Migrant Worker with Dead Bus. Uh, very cool song, and the EP is very cool as well. Uh, it's, I think, my favorite song on the EP, and it's just one of those songs to get all that mixture, and all that, that mixture. He's got the cool guitar and uh, <clears throat> the lyrics, and especially since the name was essentially picked out of a hat for the song, it's a really good tune. What are your, what are your thoughts, guys? Well, I, I really like them too because um, the sound is so atmospheric and the vocals are very strong and vibrant and I think it's it's definitely something that stands out that the vocals are so strong in sound and that they re are resonant too. Um, that's something I really enjoy about songs when vocals well, kind of excel. Through the, um, the sound is um, very dynamic and very um, vigorous too, but um, the vocals still stand out and have this very ashy feel about them, but sometimes it has some bluesy feel too. So it's it's um kind of quite complex but i really like that yeah yeah <laughs> I, yeah i agree with all of that um and there's very little i can add to it apart from i really love their name michael worker i think that's yep. a class name for a band and also the intro kind of reminds me of gimme shelter by the rolling stones which i love oh no fair enough i never thought about that but you're right so we're going to finish up with the last one today, and this is going to be Squid Thief with Cool Story, bro. <laughs>
right, that was the Squid Thief with Cool Story, bro. And uh, what 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 say about this song? I mean, it's it's a it's a great tune, and it's a uh, uh, mixed very well to to uh, to put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. Um, the first word always listening to you, um his songs uh, that comes to my mind is ludic because it's it's rather light in sound but still has its, its intense moments and it's as you said very cunningly arranged and has very many layers of instrumentals and it's just nice to listen to the progress of the song itself okay. it, uh, most, most of his stuff always makes me think of uh it's it's kind of like what the music for resident evil would have been like if resident evil had been out for the sega mega drive oh that can be yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, like, 8-bit music for horror movies, you know, it's, like, mm -hmm. it's really, really deranged, but it's also, like, computer game music, it's, it's, it's yeah. nuts. Well, that's a way of putting it, for sure. Alright, so, uh, <laughs> go ahead. No, I'll just go, yeah, so, I, I mean, I love it, like, I mean, uh, a friend of mine uh, genuinely tried to convince me to go down the 8-bit music route, because he, he literally listens to nothing else. Okay. He grew up on computer games, and he used to just... You know, you would keep going, I'll do it, man. Do the hit music stuff. And it'll be so good. Everyone <laughs> loves that shit. And I'm like, no, not everybody loves that shit, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but, it's uh, actually... Oh, sorry. I didn't want to interrupt no. you. Go it's ahead. A, um, okay, Jake uh, actually told me well, some, some while, a while ago um, that he wanted to do some um, Pokemon um, remixes. So he's okay. quite into um, these games, too. Um, that's probably why he's has some influences in his music too. Yeah, yeah, well, when it's, when it's done well, it's done, like, amazingly well. It sounds so good. But, um, you know, but I think so few people can do it well, and he's one of the few. Uh, but I think it's it's the darkness to it. It's so dark sounding. It sounds so... Uh, like, you can sort of imagine it in the... Have you ever seen the, the film with Nicolas Cage, 8mm? Yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah and it's the, that scene where they play the Apex One tune, and it's, you know, and... It's really loud in the house, and he can't find the guy. He's wandering through the house. So, you know, it's like it, you can almost imagine it in that setting in a film. Uh, you know, just turn it up really, really loud, and you know, it would scare the bejesus out of someone. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it makes perfect sense. So that is going to do it for this portion of your rewind. And I want to thank my guest Grim for joining us. It's always a good time to have you on. Yeah, cheers, man. And Nessie, always a pleasure to have you. So until next time, guys, thanks for listening. I'll be back tomorrow. I'm not sure what time yet with an another part of Year Rewind. Until then, thanks so much for listening. Bones out.